Ooh. Sorry, did I scare you? No? All right. Welcome to a cursed episode. <laughs> So welcome to episode 31, the Halloween episode. Episode 31 on the 31st of October. That's a coincidence. Did I plan that? Did I plan it all along? No. That is a coincidence. Ooh. But it is the cursed episode. This episode is cursed. One of the reasons is uh, I've had a cold for a month that I just can't shift because my son insists on in coughing directly into my mouth. Uh, and I pulled my back. Uh, setting up this and something else happened and I'll tell you about it later but uh, for now let's talk about what the episode is so it's the Monster Bash episode a big collaboration with a load of other YouTubers where we all get together on Discord and start chatting about I don't know I, I wasn't really listening so we all designed five cards we drew those and we stuck them in a big pile together we had 90 cards to pick from you pick seven of those cards and you have to create a monster that could be an illustration a painting a, a sculpture scratch build could be anything that's what the episode's about uh let's start bashing some monsters i guess uh, see you in a bit okay So, uh, like I said, Monster Bash, you have 90 cards, you have to pick seven, you have to make a monster out of it. It's pretty simple. Let's see what I've got here. So, um, yeah, um, I've got those. I need to figure out a design so I get out the sketchbook. It's the best place to kind of come up with ideas. Just uh, just make shapes with lines on them and call those lines arms and legs. And uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be good to begin with. You just need to get the, uh, the silhouette. What did you think of the the thing inspired title card that you saw earlier if you even noticed um, yeah i was quite happy with that more about that later so it's starting to take shape and it's starting to look like a weird beaked root monster so uh, I'm going to stick flowers on the head uh, and leaves, I think, will be on along the back um, and then possibly a beak, like the one in the illustration just there. And I'll take the eye from that parrot beak thing, the moon from the moon card can be a little amulet around the arm and uh, yeah, the fingers will be kind of like that, long dangly root fingers. And uh, this, this thing, I I'm not really sure what this card is, I think it's some kind of like candy trap. I'll figure it out. So the idea I have is for a creature called the Mound. Now this is a, a creature completely original to me. Uh, I got it from my brain. Uh, anyway, a wizard slash priest tried to convert a certain tribe of people and they weren't having it. So they killed him and they left him on the ground to rot. They didn't bury him. And hundreds of years passed. More and more dirt gathered around the body and more moss and grass and leaves. And it basically became a mound of dirt. And on that mound of dirt grew a tree out of the arrow shaft and a single fruit was on that tree. Now if anyone ever approached that fruit and tried to grab it, well... I... Yeah, uh, that's the mound. So to make the mound, I want to use a mound of clay. Uh, I haven't used clay in a while, 
and uh, I've never ever used Super Sculpey Grey Foam, so I want to try that out, seeing as everyone seems to use it all the time. Let's see how firm you really are. So I'm going to apologise right now, as I mentioned before, I have a cold, and I happen to call my creature the mound, which is the hardest word to say when you are completely bunged up with a cold. So it's going to be quite funny to hear me say the mound over and over again. Mound. Ma uh, anyway, I'm making an armature wire here. This is a technique I learned from Tinu on Craft Astrophy. Uh, go check him out. And there you go, there's a uh, pretty sturdy armature wire. So here is the aluminium foil. Uh, aluminium, I can say that, even though I have a cold. Basically, the bulk of the build is going to be tin foil to save on clay, because clay is expensive. Aluminium foil, isn't it? Hey, who's that? Talking of cheap statues and sculptures, did anyone ever see Saddam Hussein's statue get pulled down on the news? It was full of all sorts of crap. I'm, t I'm sure there was tin foil in there. So using the armature wire, I thread it through the tin foil to make arms and legs. Uh, not really sure where I'm going yet with this. Yeah, that can happen sometimes when you uh, just just make sure it's not in a haunted workshop and you'll be fine. So once the thing is dead, you can start positioning the arms however you like. Uh, there's, there's actually something I've got to do in a minute that I'm not really looking forward to, but it's, it's, it's I need something. Uh, one second. You know, the weirdest part of all this is he's not even dead. Uh, but this is how you get his petroleum jelly. So, grey is pretty firm, and to soften it, we're going to need some petroleum jelly and a lot of uh, manpower. I said I'm not going to do any dad jokes this week, and I mean it. So what I did, I broke it up into as smaller pieces as I could and just kind of rubbed it with the Vaseline. Uh, just kind of coat as much of it as I could. And uh, just try and squeeze it together. It's This stuff is firm. Uh, someone sent me this pasta roller, I think it is. Whatever it is, it's a roller that can squish all my clay together and it works really well, but it's a bit wobbly. Until I realised there's this clamp that comes with it that I can attach it. Anyway, yeah. Uh, once it's attached to the table, it works pretty well. And after all that, it's still pretty firm. I mean, it's softer, I guess, but it, that would have to do. So I'm going to use this silicon sculpting tool. I'm going to be honest with you, this is the worst part of the build for me. Just kind of get that first layer of clay. But it's all downhill from here. It's in a good way, like if you're on a bicycle and you're going downhill. Not like if you're in a company and it's going downhill, that's bad. Uh, so it's all uphill from here, but if you're on a bike and you're going uphill, that means it's getting worse. I'm not sure, uh, comments uh, below. But uh, yeah, it's more fun after you get the first layer of clay on. That's what I'm trying to say. And it's all down uphill, down, whatever. So there's been a lot of really good Monster Bash builds out there. I've seen them on Instagram and on other people's channels. And, you know, one thing one thing I would say to everyone is to just try and interpret it however you like. Like, you don't have to literally make that illustration on that card on your sculpture. Do you know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's whatever that can be interpreted as to you. Uh, basically, I'm trying to justify my sculpture looking nothing like the cards. Two, three, four. Five. Yeah, five points of contact with the ground is uh, good for me.
Yeah, one of the best uh, properties of Super Sculpey is that you can bake it, make it hard, uh, over and over and over again. So you can create these save points here and there. I wish I had more tips for sculpting, but I'm, you know, I'm pretty new to sculpting. I haven't sculpted that much. I've scratch built a lot, but uh, I figured, you know, I would just cut the shape of the beak out and just stick it to its face. How God made birds, I expect. So Halloween is one of the, my favorite parts of the year. You know, like the, the, the pound shop sells Halloween tat, you know, plenty of plastic bones and skulls and all sorts of tacky crap that I can turn into something else. Plus I'm a big fan of horror movies. So. And uh, yeah, I'm kind of interested in what everyone does for their Halloween. So uh, if you don't want to post it in the comment down below, you can go on my Discord and tell me, but I am genuinely interested because, you know, Americans do it big. So I'm told, uh, we don't really do it. Oh my god, what is that? It's spider season. I'm starting to feel like I'm in an episode of Trapdoor. So this is the fun part when you start adding muscles and texture. Uh, basically, use a reference for muscles. You know, my reference is always He-Man and Arnold Schwarzenegger from the 80s. Apparently it's the same thing. Obviously, you can use your own reference for muscles, uh, but for the texture, I tend to go for Freddy Krueger. Now, to smooth out some of those bumps and cracks you don't want, you use a bit of isopropyl alcohol on a brush like this and just brush away. It's very good for smoothing the surfaces and making the details look a bit more natural, but don't use too much because you can lose detail. What, the, what is going on? Now I'm going to add some detail under here, like a kind of rib cage that you probably won't ever see. I mean, to be honest, any of the detail underneath, on the underbelly of this thing, you're probably never going to see. Uh, but who knows? I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I bet you don't see any of it. But we'll see. We'll see at the end. This is called an extruder. It comes with all sorts of attachments to kind of extrude all kinds of shapes. I'm going to go for this kind of spaghetti shape. And yes, it is as satisfying as it looks. Uh, let's just watch this for a little while. Well, I've seen people use those tentacle rollers uh, from Green Stuff World, among other places, but just get a comb like this and uh, just roll it along. Look, that's all you need. Uh, I'm sure you could do it better than me, but that's, that's all I need for a bit of viney, rooty texture. So my idea is to take all these little tentacles and roots and kind of cover the whole creature of them. Uh, I want this creature to look like it is basically just roots with a giant bark jaw. And of course it's all grown out of the corpse of a dead priest wizard that nobody liked uh, just inside. So anyone who's watched my live stream would have heard me talking about how this uh, this workshop was already kind of here before I got here. Uh, there was already a few tools on the wall and there was places for tools. And some old guy used to use it and he died. And he still haunts the place to this day. And if you're lucky, you can see him. Very rare occasions you'll see him, you know, like most ghosts, you know, he doesn't. Oh, wait, hold on. He's there. He's, he's, right. he's over there. You like Ted? Oh, his name's Dead Ted. Yeah. Ted, are you ever just going to like sod off? No, nah, you sod off. I guess he's haunting me. Oh, that's typical dead Ted, that is uh, so rude. I mean, it's probably still a bit angry I used this skull for my video last week, but, you know, whatever. He wasn't using it. This is the part that's quite tricky, is uh, making armatures for the hands and feet. Now you need armatures because these hands and feet are going to be holding your model up and this clay gets heavy.
Thank God I never make hands that actually look like hands. So it's time to get out of Bitbox, uh, number two I believe, and we need an eye, and we need a hemispherical rhinestone sticker. So with this creature, to add a, another bit of narrative, he's going to have only one eye, and obviously there's a space for another one on the other side, but it's going to be completely grown over, because narrative. And that's it, that's the final bake. Now we want to make a base, so this thing is even sturdier, so take a sharp knife. Preferably not a, a soiled one. <laughs> now this stuff is foam board, foam core board. It's the foam with sheets of paper either side stuck to it. And this is PVA glue in a mustard bottle. So PVA glue has one of the strongest bonds, it will, you know, it will last a long time, but it takes forever to dry, uh, but it is good to pick off your fingers. So while the PVA dries, I'm going to use a hot glue gun to keep it together for now. Uh, yeah, it's a good technique to mix your glues, uh, unless you're a glue sniffer. I mean, I don't know, I'm not a glue sniffer, but I have sniffed glue unintentionally, uh, because I tend to be covered in it all the time. So it's experimentation time. Uh, I'm going to take PVA glue, sand, baking powder, and uh, some brown paint. And I'm just going to try and make a kind of a mud clod kind of thing. You know when mud dries and it's in those clods? Is that a word, clod? The more I say clod, the more it doesn't sound like a real word. Uh, but anyway, you just mix this stuff together until the, uh, the stick you're mixing with snaps, and it's good. So always when I have to kind of spread things like this, I tend to start with a spreader and just you end up using my fingers because, you know, just use your fingers. Always use your fingers. You're always going to use your fingers anyway. Just just use your fingers. That's looking pretty good to me. That looks like uh, a load of mud on its back. So along with plastic junk and toys, I also collect bits of twigs and sticks and natural stuff that I can use to make grow uh, natural stuff. Uh, where do I get them from? Uh, when I get them from, uh, you know, that, that big place uh, with the big light, uh, there's lots of greens, greens outside, that's, yeah, yeah, the place that's not here, the outside place. Uh, you get them from there and they're free, apparently, just laying on the floor. So I'm going to try and create some basing material for my big base and I'm pretty much doing what I did before but this time using some polyfiller instead of the baking soda. Um, well, I'll put a little bit of baking soda in there too, I mean why not. As a side note, I'm pretty sure people around the world call this stuff spackle because you all like to call things um, stupid names because you're just a big bunch of bullies. Well, here I'm using some spare roots and uh, tree bark or tree skin as I like to call it, you know, because, you know, that's technically what it is. Shut up. So that's basically Mod Podge mixed with black paint. I don't think anyone's ever done that before. I should probably name it something. Anyway, it acts as a good uh, base coat. And it seals it all in, keeps it all together. It also gives you that added security that your sculpture is not going to fall apart. So, uh, uh, did I ever tell you this workshop something? So I sprayed this model with a chocolate brown from above and it really didn't make much of a difference but this will, a bit of a dry brush, always makes a difference. That's one of the best things about making your own sculpture, you can make it as textured as you like, you can dry brush away. Poor old dry brush. So these roots are going to be kind of basically the same colour but I want to use different variations of brown and green and I know it looks pretty tedious and it's very out of character for Bill to actually uh, not just dry brush the whole thing but this is going to pay off I mean this is going to pay off Thank you. 
So this is where all that work's going to pay off. I'm going to make a, a brown oil wash. Now, if you need me to tell you how to make an oil wash, uh, let me know in the comments because I just assume everyone knows at this point. But uh, yeah, just slather it on. Then you can just dab the excess off with some tissue. But uh, I don't think I'm going to bother this time. I'm going to see what it looks like dry because it always dries lighter. But this is something you don't usually see me do is flocking. Uh, I don't really flock much. Um, I never really get to that stage in a build, but I'm going to try flocking today. I'm not very good at it. Um, so let's just, this is experiment day for Bill. You no, know, I'm experimenting. Now, no exaggeration. I electrocuted myself three times with that static grass applicator. And who knew two AA batteries can pack such a punch? I mean, really. So I'm going to use these little grass tufts. Um, these are frozen tufts. I should, uh, you know, I should make my own. I'm probably going to make my own in the video. I'm sure it's not too hard. But I'll figure it out. But they do look good. Here is Bitbox number. I'm not sure what number that is. Uh, but everyone should be keeping a Bitbox. If you're not keeping a Bitbox, uh, you're not living the Vida Loca. I honestly couldn't think of anything cool to say there uh, because I'm not very cool. But here's a little moon and star pendant I can use. So part of the build requires tiny flowers. Now, if you ever need to paint anything tiny, get them um, in a little dish like this and just kind of move them around until they're covered in paint. It's the best way to paint small things. Pretty. So now time to make the kind of religious pendant that the uh, priest wizard, the, or the prizard, I'm gonna call him the prizard, was holding. Uh, and he's still holding now, even as a root monster. Now, any of these chains, just soak them in super glue and they will stiffen up forever. I said no dad jokes. And I'm going to need a lot of leaves because there are leaves included in this build. Now, brown packing paper like this, that kind of waxy paper, it works really well if you kind of crumple it up beforehand. It gives you a good uh, leaf texture. So I'm gonna be honest, there is no easy way of adding these leaves on the back of your mound monster. I literally had to place each one individually and then spray them with uh, watered down PVA glue. Now, for all you weirdo bead fanatics out there, there is a bead in this build and it's this little apple on the tree. There you go, stop complaining in the comments. Uh, there's your bead. I hope you enjoyed that bonus bill just there and uh, the main reason why the episode was cursed not not only did i get this cold that i can't get rid of uh i put my back out i broke my very expensive camera you may notice this looks kind of different to usual because it's like an old crappy camera i borrowed from my wife um my camera is this camera and it's essentially a giant paperweight now uh, it was on a tripod and i knocked it over um because i didn't sandbag it 
Anyway, some of my patrons kindly offered to help. They've been offering to donate money to me. And as a patron, I'm like, you know, you do enough. But if any of you would like to help, uh, now, you know, I don't really expect this to happen, but if anyone would like to help me, they can donate down below. There's a PayPal donation link, and I'm going to try and raise enough money to get either this back or get it repaired or something of equivalent, you know, value. Uh, just something that would work with the setup that I have or the equipment that I have. I don't like this camera. I don't like it. But other than that, the build went really well. I mean, I'm really happy with this. Um, I quite like the story about it. Uh, and I'm just really happy with this. So, uh, you know, it's not quite, you know, it's not worth quite as much as that camera. But, uh, yeah, I'm really happy. I hope you enjoyed the build. There's a playlist down below. Watch all of the videos. They're all going to be really good. You know, I'm not really supposed to show the builds, but I, yeah, I'll show you some. I, I've got a little sneak preview, so... Here's Trent's from uh, Miscast. Yeah, look at that. It's so colourful. Look at that. That's it's very creative. Uh, yeah, actually, I won't show too many more. But uh, yeah, that's that's what you should expect. So go watch the rest of the playlist straight after this video. And stick around for the glamour shots. So, I guess I'll just... Um, yeah. I'll see you. See you then. Okay, today I'm going to try and read out as many patrons as I can. Okay, so David Nandrin, Craig Turpin, Thomas Boyton, uh, Florian, uh, uh, Ingo Duarte, stop having weird names, everyone, Daniel M, John McCormick, uh, Michael Drew, uh, Jonathan Smith, Tom Jolly, uh, Iron Rex, <laughs> Jennifer Moreno. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, everyone. Just, you know, stop having weird names. Have one syllable for your first name. One syllable for your surname. That would be sorted. Anyway, what do you think of this monster? I'm really happy with this. I'm never really happy with any of my builds, to be honest with you. But I'm actually quite happy with this. Um, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, patrons. Thanks for watching. Uh, maybe I'll see you.